a man enter a coffee shop, ears ready and glancing around, setting up to watch at all points. He hurries to the kitchen and bars the door behind him. Battling the cook, we have a pause. There is a narrator asking, do I look crazy to you? Rewind and new opening scene. We are taken through by a monologue talking how much words verbally expressed a day by men, by ladies, and by lawyers. We meet Frank Valera, a successful lawyer, who is known to find ways of getting the NG not guilty verdict for his clients. Next scene, we see his family, wife Sue and daughter Olivia, preparing for a talent show. Olivia is given the telephone to converse with her father, telling him, you'll cherish the show. Upon hearing that sentence Frank chooses, this is an ideal opportunity to see his little girl perform. As he goes to the lift, the door closes, and his coworker in the other room calls him over to examine a case. Time speeds on and goes until quite a bit later, making Frank significantly later. We see Frank in rush hour gridlock as the downpour pours and his little girl performs in front of an audience. Frank shows up at the presentation lobby and doesn't see his family. He calls them, however, no reaction. He gets back, calls Sue to apologize, and advises her to kindly get back home as it is getting late. Time speeds past and we see the clock tick as Frank hangs tight for their return. Sadly, the police car moves toward the door. Frank is taken to a crime location and the voices from the police become dim behind the scenes as he approaches the scene. Two bodies embracing each other in a trench, it appears to be his wife and his little girl. He shouts and is kept down by police. Frank shows up to the police station asking the police boss, Lustiger, what they are doing about the case. Lustiger is playing on his telephone and is half addressing Frank's inquiries. Some data exchange about the area is being covered by mafia and gold fibers were tracked down nearby. There are no leads and it seems the police force is doing nothing to advance the case. Frank blows up with the present circumstance and storms out angrily. In the corridor, he sees Officer Strode, who inquires as to whether he's all right. They trade a word and Frank leaves the police station. Next shot is from above. Many dark umbrellas encompass the two caskets. Downpours pouring intensely. Frank is told by his father-in-law that he has sufficiently heard and doesn't have any desire to hear from Frank ever again. A nod is enough. Frank goes to get drunk at a bar. He becomes more drunk and ends up at the back room. There is a fighting enclosure with two contenders in the ring. Frank looks as he downs two more shots and starts a fight with a spectator. The montage shows Frank getting into the ring and he begins to battle in the fights, losing severely each time. Officer Strode sees Frank and has a discussion with him in the bar, forthcoming discussions about his past job as a lawyer and his way of thinking behind defending people who don't deserve to be. Montage of Frank getting buff and sparing in karate and jujitsu gyms. Also, him developing to be silent. Frank returned to the crime location in a dark vehicle. He stops under a bridge and walks to the area where the bodies were tracked down, searching for clues. He hears a tapping somewhere out there and notes that if he wasn't quiet, he would not have been able to hear it, checking the amount he has changed from previously. Frank goes towards the sound and moves up an antenna to a shack that has somebody living there. He glances around and takes a couple photographs as he watches out of the windows. The windows have an ideal perspective on the area where his family was killed. Frank returns of his vehicle and finds a group of four men attempting to get into his vehicle. The men say Frank is in their area and he can pay his dues by giving him his wallet and keys. A gang member has a canine and was unclipped to deliver on to Frank yet the canine whines and backs off. The gang member kicks the canine and pursues the canine off. Frank doesn't say anything and reaches to give up his wallet. As he stretches out the wallet, he additionally pulls his keys into his clench hand and goes after the tallest man. Battle scene happens. Frank to the point wins. He takes out the photograph of his wife and girl and shows the main guy. He doesn't say anything and searches the man's face to check whether he remembers them or is the killer. The gang member isn't. Frank snaps a picture of him and takes him out. However, not before he is shot in the stomach by another mobster. As his vision blurs, he is rescued by a lady. Frank awakens shirtless in bed with the injury covered. He says nothing to the lady as she makes sense of that she, Alma, 
is an emergency room nurse and volunteers nearby. He got lucky that the bullet was a clean entry and exit. Frank doesn't say anything and leaves. Outside, he sees the canine. The canine follows him, and the two of them arrive at home. Frank sets up the photograph of the mobster on his whiteboard and crosses off the mobster's face. The doorbell rings, and it is the ER nurse. She holds out his wallet saying that he left and that she actually needs to change his bandages. She lets him know that he talks in his sleep and realizes he can talk. Yet, Frank actually says nothing. He gives her the memorial invitation demonstrating that his family has died. Alma befriends him. Frank endeavors to find the potential witness who lives in a makeshift shelter. Yet he loses him as he shuts his door to his vehicle and frightens away the man. He goes to see Alma at her home, however, she isn't there. We see the following scene of Alma working in a clinic. There are a group of men who approach her saying that she need to pay her dues. She says, she is finished and doesn't have any desire to connect with them any longer. The man chokes Alma and tells her, no. They leave. Frank turns the corner and appears. As he drives Alma home later, she uncovers that the shelter Frank investigated was the home of a man called Mr. Shivers, who works as a cook at the nearby burger joint. After he drops Alma off, the gangsters show up and inquire as to whether she will keep providing drugs to them. Frank abruptly shows up and cripples them. She makes sense of that she worked with them for a year, taking drugs from the clinic for them. Frank brings her to his back home for her security. Cut to the starting scene of Frank, we presently know, battling shivers we recently met. Dialogue saying to the audience, so am I still crazy to you now? Frank tracks down Mr. Shivers working in the kitchen of a burger joint. They battle. Frank shows his family picture to Shivers, who saw the murder from his shelter. Shivers says that a cop carried out the killings. Frank finds in Shivers' eyes that he recognized his family, yet doesn't see murder. Frank accepts Shivers and runs out the back door as help shows up to the door he closed off. Frank then slips into the police station and finds that Hank Strode was assigned to watch that specific area, the evening of the homicides. Following a few days of following Strode and exchanging vehicles following him, Frank maps out Strode's routine. He gets that Strode has an extra key behind a plant and goes into Strode's home and finds a police coat with gold strands coming free from a weaved sleeve badge. As he looks further, he sees a fake door. In the cubby opening, Frank likewise finds a bag that contains magazines with Frank on the cover, news stories about Strode's kid girl's homicide, and Frank's legal defense of the suspect, who was freed on technicality. Frank sees a digital camera and turns it on. Inside are photographs of Frank at the burial service and his family's birthday celebration. Frank understands the weightiness of the circumstance and leaves a message on Strode's vehicle advising him to meet at the warehouse at 11 p.m. to get back the camera. As Strode shows up, a battle follows, leaving both injured. Strode believed that Frank should suffer for freeing the suspect, and he maintained that Frank should realize what Strode felt. Frank, to the point, defeats his desires to kill him, recalling Aurelius's quote, the best revenge is to be unlike your enemy, and he then knocks Strode out. Afterward, we see news coverage of Strode's trial and conviction. The police office says that a bad cop set aside is ideal. Frank and Alma visit the graves of his wife and daughter, where Frank finally ends his vow of silence by saying, I love you, to his family's graves. Please, like and subscribe. Thank you.